Welcome back to Becky Amy Horse Training, and I am going to answer a question via video that I received on the YouTube channel. Um, oh, I suppose it was on a post I did about a year ago, and it was another uh, video that I did regarding groundwork with a weanling, and the person asked me how come I kept my colt straight when I was disengaging the hind end when he asked him to move his hip over. And, you know, I didn't answer the question right away. I had to think about it for a couple of days because there's lots of reasons why I do that. And I thought, you know, this would be a really good idea for a Training Tip Tuesday video. And we're going to use the same quote from last week. Now, this little guy, I haven't had a chance to work with him very much. I think I've turned him out a couple of times this week. We've had some really bad weather and some pretty gnarly wind. And it's a little breezy today, so I apologize if there's wind in the microphone. Now, this guy, um, we've worked on this a little bit, and so I tend to keep my colts straighter when I'm asking them to disengage their hind end. So I'm going to ask him right in the spot where my leg would be on his body if I were riding him. And I'm going to release the pressure as soon as he moves over, pet him. You know, this guy responds really well when I take the pressure completely off of him. And I'm going to ask him again. You know, my magic number is three times. I, I like to ask a horse three times, one time so they know, the second time is so they know that I know the third time is for practice, okay? Whatever your magic number is, you do you, you do whatever works for you. Remember from our last video, you know, the horse is going to tell you what's okay with them, and they're going to be ultimately the one who tells you whether it's working for them or not, okay? So, hi, Winnie. Sometimes we have cats that jump in the wrong pen with us. So we're going to set him back up here so the camera can see. And we're going to ask him to move his hip over again. So it takes very little touch with this guy. Now, um, the person asked me how come I don't bend his head and disengage the hind end at the same time, okay? So the reason is, is because I personally like my horses a lot straighter in their body when I'm working with them and when I'm riding them and when I'm teaching them new techniques and I'm putting the basic handle on them. I believe that there are a lot of different scenarios working on the ranch, working speed events, working trail courses, that require a horse to be able to independently use the front part of their body, the middle part of their body, and the hind end to do those maneuvers. Um, case in point, a gate. A horse will have to walk out the gate. They'll have to side pass up to the gate, walk out the gate, go through it, and then they have to move that front end back over to close that gate and then move the hind end over to get you close enough to it to help you close it. Now, if I were to take the horse's head away to get that hind end to move over, I wouldn't be able to get him up to that gate to be able to get it open and closed. So I need to, those parts to move independently of each other. So we can bend this colt's head around and we can have him disengage that hind end, okay? Now, what happens is, is we lose the power in the hind end. Now, that's really effective if you have something that's wanting to be naughty, if you have something that's wanting to buck with you, if you have something that's just not listening to your leg and getting stiff and they won't move off your leg, we can get them to disengage that hind end. And we can just keep on bending that head around. Okay, so this is a four-year-old mare. She is my personal horse now. I started her as a two-year-old. The owner took her home, turned her out, brought her back as a three-year-old for a tune-up. I rode her again at three. She was a standout as a two- and a three-year-old. owner decided they wanted to sell her, and so I bought her from the owner. So she's my personal horse. And I've been back to working on her again here for about the last month, and she is potentially going to be my next barrel horse prospect. And I'm going to show you why I like my personal horses to be a little bit straighter in their body than having that bend to them. 
and this is going along with uh, the question I received on the YouTube video, why I keep my wainlings a little bit straighter in their neck when I'm asking them for them to move their haunches over. So if I just take this right and bend this mare's head around, See how I kind of lose the hind end and, and I get this backing up stuff here and she doesn't really entirely know what I'm asking for. Now, let's try it the other direction. If I just take her and bend her head around, she's just going to bend her head for me, okay? But if I go to two hands and I use some of my outside rein here. This is one of the things your outside rein is for. And I'm going to support her with inside calf. I'm not going to put my heel on her inside calf. I'm going to take this outside leg, move it back towards her hip, and I'm going to keep her straighter in her body and I want to keep that hind end still, okay? So see how I've kept that leg into her and kept her straighter in her body? Now, she wanted to come out of that turn a little bit faster, and that's ideal. I want them to come out of it fast. That's how they teach the horses to spin multiple circles. That's how we teach them to accelerate out of a turn, okay? And so when we're asking for that turn on the forehand, we want to have control I, let me back up. I start with a turn on the forehand because I want to isolate control of the hind end first. It's easier for me to teach them, me personally, to teach them to move that hind end instead of teaching them to move the front end first. So that's why on the ground, I'll ask them to move that hind end and stay straighter. Okay. So... We've kept the front end still, and we've isolated the hind end. Now, if I were to bend her and ask her to move that hind end at the same time, what I'm doing is, A, we get elevated head, hollowed out, okay? We're losing our motor back here, and I don't ever want to lose my horse's motor any time. That's where all the power comes from. That's where all the drive comes from. The only time that I want to lose that motor is let's say that she's being really naughty and she's paying attention to something else and she's being really high strung or she's wanting to buck and be silly. Then I'm going to kick that hind end out of way. And I'm going to keep on doing it and disengaging it and make it really, really hard for her. This helps get some tired. It takes away that power. So if you have a horse that's wanting to be naughty and get you in trouble and make bad choices, you're taking away that power from them. And you're being really, really awkward. You take your hand wide. And what we're doing is we're working basic physics here. If I take the head that way, the hind end is going to go that way, all right? And that's a problem, to go into it further, that's a problem that happens to barrel racers when they're generally beginner barrel racers that don't understand the physics of how a turn is made. They, they will go into a turn and they think that you just bend the horse's head around and you just pull. And they don't understand that you have to have control of the rest of the body back here to make that turn. And they think that, you know, you just put a bigger bit on them and you could snap them around that turn that much better. So let me back up here to a time when one of my best friends, I was visiting with her about my barrel turn. And she asked me, how's your canter pirouettes? Now, if you're not familiar with what a canter pirouette is, it's a maneuver in upper level dressage that they do at the canter. And the high end stands, stays almost in, in place. And they essentially canter or lope a circle.
vehicle around their hind end. That's essentially what we're doing in barrel racing and in pole bending. We make a slightly bigger circle in barrel racing, but in pole bending, it's essentially a canter pirouette. So ultimately, I want her to make a canter pirouette. I don't want her to make a reigning horse spin. Now, the reigning horses, they're really bent around, and that's really cool, and that's a really difficult maneuver. And it, it's just as difficult as doing a canter pirouette in the upper level dressage patterns. Um, but we want our horse to stay a lot straighter in those canter pirouettes. So think of this as a walking pirouette. If we think of it in those terms, I kept her a whole lot straighter through her body that way. So now let's add a little bit of speed to this. Okay, and we're going to have to help her with some outside rain because she doesn't know how to make that turn yet. And heck, to be honest, my good barrel horse that's on rest right now for winter, if I pulled her out right now and I saddled her up and I went to go do this with her, she'd be out of shape and she probably wouldn't go to do it. It would take a little bit of legging her up, a little bit of muscle memory to bring her back and have her get it again. So at a trot, I'm gonna keep her straighter in her body. Trot back out again. Keep her straight in her body. Hold with that outside leg, keep it tighter to the inside, keep that hip closer to the inside, make a smaller circle with the hind end and the front end. That's where all our power comes from. Hold, hold. Keep her moving all the way through. So what happens with a lot of beginner barrel racers is they go up to their first barrel and then they go like this. And we've lost our forward motion the horse doesn't understand what's being asked of him. When you drop that outside rein and you're not supporting with an outside leg and keeping them straighter through their body, that's what happens. And this mare's been worked on quite a bit already. She's not being a really good example, but <clears throat> when they really swing their hip out, when you see those horses that are just grabbing with their front end and they, they're, they're trying to pull themselves through with front row drive, and they lose that hind end power because they've just had too much bend taken in their head. All right, there we go. There, there it's happening. So let's do another good one this direction, and then we're going to change directions. Keep her straight, support with an outside rein. All right, whoa. So get a nice quiet trot of her moving forward. Gonna bring her down into a smaller circle. Support with the outside rein, outside leg. Another one, another thing we want to keep, make sure that we're doing when we're doing this, is that we are posting on the correct diagonal. Okay, it's gonna help this horse balance herself the best in this turn. Okay, there's nobody out there that's talking about this. That's a barrel racer. I've heard one talk about it. And her reason for it was wrong, okay? The reason we want to be up in the air when this front leg is down is to take the weight off of that inside front leg, okay? Anytime. So it doesn't matter if we're riding in an arena or a round pen or we have a rail. If we're taking this horse to the left, we need to be rising when that front leg is on the ground. 
Same thing when we go to the right. Let's go to the right real quick and we'll show you that. So on the rise, when that front right leg is on the ground, we're taking the weight off that inside leg. <clears throat> this is a horse that's trying to balance her own body weight as well as my 20 some pound saddle and my 120 pound body. She doesn't need me leaning on her, bouncing. She doesn't need me being sloppy. I gotta have core, I gotta be able to sit up, look up where I'm going, stay the hell out of her way, okay? Okay, we're gonna go back to the left. Okay, go back to making this small circle again. Supporting with the outside ring. Keeping her in front of our leg. Okay, let's do it at a lope. Her straighter through her body. Now watch what happens if we take too much head. If we bend her around too much. Look what just happened. We kicked that hind end out and we did a turn on the forehand and we lost all our power behind. Okay? That's what happens. We'll give her a little break and you can absorb that for a second. We gotta keep forward motion. We gotta support with an outside ring until they're able of supporting themselves. And it takes a lot of muscle memory, it takes a lot of time to teach it. And see, now we dropped it again, and now I'm gonna have to fix that. And we have to recognize that as riders that we're allowing our horses to drop the hind lead. Ask for the smaller turn. Okay, we're gonna ask for it again here. Easy. Melt her down, let her come down to a walk. She got it correct, let her rest. We don't have to do it a million times. Do it enough times for them to understand it. Move on to something else. You keep drilling that, they're gonna get tired, they're gonna get sore, and you gotta give them a break, okay? Now here again, one of the most important things that they need to know how to do is play game over after you've worked on something. She's got to go quiet. She's got to be able to relax and understand this is her chance to rest because we're going to do this again. And how would you go about fixing this if, let's say hypothetically, she was wanting to jig and jog off and prance and you were trying to hold her as tight as you could, you know, and she was going right through that, okay, if she, if she was wanting to do that. You know what we'd do? We'd make it difficult for her. So we'd go back to playing this game where we take the head out, kick the hip over, take the head out, kick the hip over. That's how we make it difficult for them, and then when they want to walk off quiet, you let them walk off quiet. All right, well now we both caught our breath, so we're gonna do it to the right. Add a lope. Again, we're trying to keep her straighter in her body. We don't too much, want too much bend in that neck, because when we have too much bend in that neck, 
that hip is going to kick way over on us. We want to keep that hip underneath us all the time. Bring her down to a smaller circle. Keep that outside leg on her. Keep your hands moving with the head. Bring her down to a smaller circle. Let her out of it. Come back down to a small circle again. And then let her rest. See, she knows the game. She worked really hard there. And we release. Now, if we'd have kept going, she probably would have dropped that hind lead on me. And I had had to fix it. And then I'd been still here trying to screw with this, trying to get it correct again. And I'd had a really tired horse and a horse that really resented me. And I wasn't real happy with what I was asking of her. So I hope that answers some of those questions. And, you know, don't hesitate to ask more questions in the comments. Um, I'd love to keep expanding on this idea here. And it really helps me with ideas for new videos, and I'll do my best to get through these questions and show you either on the ground or on the horse's back and help you understand what we're working towards in the field, at least what I'm working towards with the horses that I work on. Um, you know, what I work on isn't always everybody's cup of tea. This, how I make my horses isn't... It isn't necessarily what they want in the show ring. What I want is a horse that's really user-friendly and really efficient so that anybody can get on them and they can go to work on them and they can go do whatever they want to do and they can enjoy them. So all that being said, I hope you guys are able to take something from this. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe. And make sure you hit like. And again, send any comments or questions below. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.